distortion of the, of the frames um, uh, project. Um, just uh, a few um, points of housekeeping here. The, today's event, as you know, has been scheduled to last two hours, including questions and answers and also the breakout sessions. Um, we um, invite you to introduce yourselves in the chat and feel free to use the chat also uh, for any questions that you have during the presentation during the, uh, the talks um, and we will try to respond to them either in the chat or um, the, the speaker as soon as they finish speaking. As you have seen, the session is being recorded. Uh, we might also take screenshots during the event uh, to um, put them on our website. Uh, so, sorry. Um, so if you don't want to appear in the photos, you're welcome to keep your cameras off. Um, and we have also got the hashtags, virtual exchange and frames tweet, if you're tweeting about this event which we strongly encourage you to do as well. And the recording will be shared on the Frames website. You have the, um, sorry, there's a, there's a typing error. Um, it's framesproject.eu, not comma EU. You will also receive a follow-up email with the link. Um, so, so that's all from me. Okay, so let's um, start with um, the first speaker who is, uh, Marcello Scalisi. Marcello is the director of UNIMED, the Mediterranean Universities Union, uh, which counts 144 universities from 23 countries on both shores of the Mediterranean. Un UNIMED is also the um, coordinator of the European project Frames, which is organizing this event. Over to you, Marcello, and I will stop sharing. So. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you for this introduction. And uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see that in, independent and by concrete participation, there are a lot of participants that are outside of our uh, networking dimension, outside the, from our region. And this explains us very well how important and global is this discussion and this uh, uh, dimension of virtual, uh, virtual exchange and in particular virtual exchange in, in our education. As Anna said, uh, UNIMED is a network of universities. I'm happy also to see some family faces or some of our members with us. Uh, it's a network of 144 universities from 23 countries of the Euro Mediterranean region. We have members, universities from Southern Mediterranean, North Africa, Middle East, and from the European Mediterranean countries, but also we have members outside of the region, uh, from the Gulf, from Northern Europe, uh, from Finland, for instance, and also from Western Balkan, from uh, uh, Albania, but also we have some members from Iraq. Um, UNIMED did a very interesting uh, experiences in virtual exchange with the previous a uh, uh, call launched by European Commission on virtual exchange for in Southern Mediterranean region. We did three years of work with jointly with other important members, and it was an amazing experience that was launched before COVID-19 arrived. And during COVID-19 and also this uh, of this year, we are unfortunately exploring in some way, testing how important is this digital dimension, this virtual dimension that obviously can't, can't substitute the physical mobility. All the activity that we are doing in this digital dimension of virtual exchange and virtual mobility and so on, from our perspe perspective, obviously can't be uh, uh, the solution of the mobility. We still think that physical mobility remains an important tool of our internationalization dimension for our students, for our academic community. But for sure, uh, virtual exchange is something that can add an important uh, experience in this, an important tool, in particular looking, for instance, how to improve the north-south mobility looking at our, uh, our region. Um, I'm very happy, as I said at the beginning, that the participants registered 
in the, for this event, we had 50, 35 countries and 12, more than 200 people. Again, I think that we have to insist on this and to explore more and more how to introduce virtual exchange in academic programs, how to help universities to be more active in this uh, dimension. And as you know, the European Commission through the new call of Erasmus Plus is in some way trying to enlarge this dimension to this opportunity, this tool also to other regions, uh, to other third countries, not only Southern Mediterranean, but also the Sub-Saharan Africa, Western Balkan, and so on. Uh, I think that I can stop here. I would like just to thank all the partners of Frames Project, which is an amazing experience that we are coordinating, thanks to uh, Christina Stefanelli, first of all, which is our coordinator of Frames Project, but let me thank Uni Collaboration, Sharing Perspective, in the University of Girona, the University of Siena, that are two of our members, and the University of Limerick, which is not still our members, but why not? Probably they would like to join in, in the future. Thank you very much again. I, I wish you a, a nice, nice webinar, nice meeting nice discussion and of course if you want to know more about our activity and you want to stay in touch with us let us know thank you very much thank you very much marcello and uh, i pass the microphone on to francesca helm who's going to be speaking about why virtual exchange in higher education francesca comes from the university of padua she's a researcher there and she is uh, uh, an expert of many things, among which virtual exchange. So over to you, Francesca. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm just going to share my screen. Does that work? Yes, fine, uh, Francesca, go ahead. OK, so, so I've been asked to talk about why virtual exchange. And of course, I'm a great believer in virtual exchange, but um, and I imagine I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted in a sense, but I'd like to explore with you today um, some of the reasons on, on different levels, um, just to, to make sure we're on the same page in terms of what virtual exchange is. Um, and, and one of the common kind of confusions is, is the distinction between virtual mobility and virtual exchange. So while virtual mobility is about the, the use of ICT, obtain the benefits as one would have with physical mobility but without the need to travel and focuses on the cooperation of educational institutions and the recognition of achievements um, virtual exchange is very much centered on the interaction and communication between young people between students um, who are often geographically separated and so instead of actually access to educational offers of cross-border universities it, the, the focus is on exchange, on competence building, interaction in small groups. Um, administrators implementing these concepts in higher education, however, are confronted with a variety of organizational, didactic and administrative challenges. So it's, it, it's, a, it's an educational practice, and I'd like to focus very much on virtual exchange as this kind of pedagogic um, approach to exchange. Um, so why virtual exchange? I think it depends very much on who you ask. So if we think on the kind of national and supranational level, um, virtual exchange can also be seen as a form of soft power, you know, soft power as a form, as a tool for public diplomacy. Um, it's how nations or supranational organizations like the European Commission seek to secure influence overseas by persuasion or attraction rather than by military force or threats or economic sanctions. And so one of the dimensions of Joseph Nye's uh, view of, of soft power is the development of lasting relationships with key individuals over many years through scholarships, exchanges, training, seminars. Um, international study abroad exchange programs have, have been the focus um, until very recently, but this has been kind of redimensioned perhaps a little bit with, with COVID. Um, and so we have national initiatives like the Defense Initiative in the United States, um, which launched in 2016, I think, Erasmus Virtual Exchange by the Commission. 
um, which started in 2018, we're also seeing European national initiatives such as the DRRD, IVAC program. So we are seeing a growing interest on this kind of higher level, which is important to us perhaps for funding. Um, but I'd also like to focus on the individual level, on the student level. Um, and here, I think I just have some quotes from students who have taken part in virtual exchanges. And these were from the research we did on the Erasmus virtual exchange. Here we have a student from um, Romania who talked about her participation in an exchange with students from Hungary in an exchange which looked at um, how the, the, the First World War was being commemorated in the two countries a hundred years later. And so here she says, through this project, I was able to meet new people whom I could exchange ideas and opinions. The subject allowed me as a Romanian history student to see another side of the discourse regarding these events and made me realize that such controversial events can't be analyzed just from one perspective. It also helped me refine my teamwork skills, but also time and task management capabilities. And here we have a couple of other student perspectives. So again, this idea of virtual exchange providing an opportunity to position yourself, understand that there are other positionings. I see the world from a Western Europe perspective, a Western Europe person point of view. And that is definitely not the only perspective. I could see that each country has a different way of thinking than me. And another one, a student who couldn't afford or participate in Erasmus Mobility, but managed to get in touch with people around the world to share thoughts and ideas. So we have these kind of very high level and, and the uh, student level, but I have to focus perhaps on the institutional perspective, why internationalize? And, um, but I'd like to look at this critically. So internationalization, so virtual exchange is a form of internationalization, internationalization at home or of the curriculum. Um, but we very often forget to ask why, why internationalize and why virtual exchange? So internationalization has become a catch-all phrase used to describe anything and everything remotely linked to the global, intercultural, or international dimension of higher education, and is thus losing its way, wrote Jane Knight a few years ago. In response to this identity crisis of internationalization, she proposes not to revise the definition of the term, but rather to focus on examining the fundamental values underpinning it. So why? What are the values behind virtual but, and internationalization. And in response to this, uh, Sharon Stein, Vanessa Andreotti, and other scholars, um, they kind of developed a framework looking at four articula articulations of internationalization in higher education. So we have the, the um, internationalization for the global knowledge economy about improving individual and national economic advantage within the global knowledge society, which is a very mainstream, perhaps near view of, of um, internationalization. Internationalization for the global public good, which is more about democratizing access to modern institutions, expanding opportunities for social mobility. We have anti-oppressive internationalization, working in partnership for systemic change towards global justice, anti-colonial and anti-racist approaches. And then at the bottom, this relational translocalism, which centers interdependence, expanding imaginary existence beyond what is currently possible. So if we look from the employability point of view, we have the idea of graduate attributes. Um, what do we want the students to come out of university with? Transversal skills, communication skills, the ability to work in group, problem solving, um, being able to work in culturally diverse settings, digital competences, critical thinking, global competence. In terms of global competence, we have a definition from the OECD, um, a definition which was developed um, particularly to focus on the assessment of global competence. Now we have the PISA assessment of global competence. And it's seen as the capacity to examine local, global, and intercultural issues, to understand and appreciate the perspectives and worldviews of others, to engage in open, appropriate, and effective interactions with people from different cultures, and to act for collective well being and sustainable development. In terms of inclusion and the idea of internationalization for the global public, 
said, um, we know that international student mobility is only available to a minority of students, a cultural elite, if you like. The objective of the European Commission for 2020 was to reach mobility for 20% of the, of the European student population. And so it didn't target the remaining 80% within Europe. Um, and, and this is seen as a kind of fundamental flaw, perhaps, if you like, in, in, in prioritizing virtual physical mobility um, as it is about internationalization for the elite. Also important is the diversity of perspectives and knowledges through uh, mobility, because if we look at the data in terms of Erasmus, where did higher education students come from and where did they go, the exchange is very much between um, countries which are near to each other culturally and geographically, cultural and geographic proximity. And again, this how much is this contributing to our awareness and our coming into contact with diversities of perspectives and knowledge? Um, now, obviously, there is a great deal of talk about sustainability of the environment. So we are part of a living, a living planet, which is finite. Um, what is the environmental impact of academic mobility? Um, the Times Higher, Ed Higher Education study estimated the carbon footprint of student mobility is equivalent to the annual emissions of certain countries. Um, and we know that there are certain countries where there has been a, a, a stop on mobility of academics and of students as well, limiting or very much um, considering about how we move and what we move for. And I think this is important, though, of course, it's important to point out that um, technologies also have a, a, a considerable impact on the environment. Um, we're told very much to focus on the sustainable development goals and um, in, in our curricula, at least here at the University of Padua, and I'm sure in many other universities, we have to define our curriculum goals in terms of also the sustainable development goals. And can these goals be achieved without transnational, transdisciplinary collaboration? Um, I think a lot of the real world activity is you know, important to collaborate, but in, in teaching, um, speaking as a higher education teacher, how much do I actually collaborate in my teaching with other colleagues? How much do we get our students to collaborate rather than to compete against each other? COVID, uh, as we all know, has kind of dramatically changed, perhaps, how we view internationalization, higher education, the use of technology in education, not, not always for the good. I'm, I'm very concerned about some developments in the use of technology, um, particularly in, in control, security, surveillance. Um, we're not using technology for collaboration as much as we could do. Um, Sharon Stein wrote, does it mean the end of the world or internationalization as we know? There was an expected decline in incoming international students, also outgoing students. And this has been the case, obviously, in, in, in 2020, not in Italy. Um, I think there has been an increase, perhaps, in international students arriving, though I, don't, I know that's not the case um, in all countries. One of the questions was, was COVID an opportunity to reimagine higher education internationalization? For us involved in virtual exchange, was it a possibility to reimagine the, the, the role of virtual exchange in internationalization? We could think about virtual exchange as an opportunity to decolonize the curriculum and um, change the way, the kind of relations we have with other countries. Um, critical global citizen looks how we can challenge normalized assumptions and power relations, how we can present deeper historical and systemic analyses and confront the legacy of colonialism, which perhaps in the last two years has become more visible in the public, this idea of decolonization, redefining and repurposing the concept of global citizenship to advocate for more inclusive forms of representation and the redistribution of resources and also allowing us opportunities to learn from different ways of knowing in order to imagine the world differently. Do we really want to go back to the world pre-COVID? 
Uh, how likely, though, is, is, is this to happen? There was a recent article in the University World News um, which talks about a missed opportunity for the future of higher education and internationalization by Hans de Witt and Elspeth Jones. Um, and they were writing about this statement published in 2021, a common statement in support of international education and mobility as a result of the 2021 international education leadership. And what they conclude is that the overall impression given by the statement is that of a Western physical mobility focused approach to international education, something that may have been relevant in the past, but is much less for the present and for the future. So I think it's very much up to us to see and to think about how we want to internationalize, why we want to internationalize, and how we want to use virtual exchange in this process of internationalization. I think it can meet multiple <laughs> perspectives on internationalization, um, but we really mustn't lose sight of the question, why? Why are we doing virtual exchange? And what are our values as educators and as institutions as we engage in virtual exchange? So I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much, Francesca. Um, that's that's great. Are there any questions for Francesca before we move on to the next uh, presentation? Lots of interesting ideas there. Um, there was a comment from Juan about um, the fact that uh, um, virtual exchange could never substitute physical learning mobility, physical exchange. Um, I think, uh, Juan, yes, you've got your hand up. Do you want to just activate your microphone and... Can I just say in response to Juan, I, I also think that virtual exchange, and I didn't say it, can perhaps motivate students or Could give I... them the confidence to take part in physical exchange. And that's something that I didn't say. Mm -hmm. Yes. If, well, first of all, Francesca, thank you so much because it was extremely interesting. I mean, from our perspective, right? Yes, because you mentioned the 20% target and everything. And also considering the student comment and then the inclusion and mention of this, the only risk that I see when we take that narrative of like, yes, 20% is too little, or it's, it's a very reduced uh, target. And then student, even students considering, oh yeah, I couldn't go mobility because I don't have the money, but then at least I participated in, in virtual exchange. I think we should shift the narrative a bit in that regard. We should understand that virtual exchange, as you were describing, is a fantastic internationalization tool that all the students should have access to. And at the same time, we should see it as a very good pathway to start participating in physical mobility while advocating for bigger targets, especially for those that struggle the most to participate in learning mobility, right? And, and that's kind of my, my fear when we, discuss, when we discuss virtual exchange that many times, especially for policymakers, it's like, look, now we have an alternative uh, that can make internalization more inclusive. But I think that's not really the, the right approach. I, I do not think that you, you're actually saying that, but it, I, I just think that's very important to actually um, put this message, right? To, to, put, to push this message forward. They are complementary and we can actually improve internationalization at large when we deliver quality virtual exchanges and we can push for more internationalization that is attractive for all students. So it was only that small comment. Thank you so much, Lynn. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree, Juan. I, th I think it can certainly improve the quality of internationalization. I think it is a compliment. I don't think it's a replacement, but I think that it's, um, Again, we have to think about why, why mobility, so why virtual exchange? I think they're, they're, they're interlinked. Um, Mm -hmm. We have another question from Sergio Di Sano. Um, would you yes, like to... my, my uh, okay. My question is this: In uh, my department, and uh, we have a degree of a master degree in psychology. We are, we are involved in a blended intensive program. And one discussion was about the topic. Uh, somebody said it's more important to have a specific about the content of our master degree. Somebody said it would be better to have some soft skill. For example, Francesca talked about uh, transversal skill, communication skill, ability to work. So my question. 
question is about the relation between virtual exchange and blended intensive program of the Erasmus program. And what do you think about the content of this kind of, uh, is more, uh, does she think it's better to work on soft skill, uh, for example, global competence, problem solving, or it could be also interesting to work on more content specific in this kind of exchange? I think that there, there is often a tension between the content and the skills, and I think both can be met, okay? The very too much, too often the focus is um, only on content without thinking about the, um, the value of virtual exchange. So if you are engaging in an, in an international collaboration, you're having students um, interacting with other students, you need, there needs to be a purpose for this. And the purpose isn't only accessing the content. So we want them to collaborate, to learn from each other, to learn from the, the perspectives of others. And that needs to be built into the, the, into the exchange. And it, you, know, you can address content through this. So content can be approached from different perspectives, but you need to design the virtual exchange component thinking about the content and how different perspectives and different um, attitudes towards that kind of content is relevant to the students in the different countries and how it can, um, how the international component can enrich the content learning, if you like, as well. So always um, bringing in uh, both aspects, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a comment from Laura Hoskins um, in the chat about, uh, yes, about the fact that the virtual exchange can often be uh, a taster if we want in collaborative online projects before perhaps taking the plunge and doing a physical mobility. Um, and Marie-Thérèse also mentioned that we are at a turning point of VE and internationalization due to the pandemic opportunities and our collective past experience of VE. So um, it's important, obviously, we don't like to talk about the benefits of COVID. <laughs> COVID has mostly had very negative um, effects, but perhaps uh, uh, simply the fact that this, um, this period has opened up opportunities at least to start thinking things differently, which is what you were saying, Francesca. Um, you know, to reconsider things rather than simply think, okay, as soon as we this finishes, we're just going to go back to exactly what we had before. This is an opportunity to rethink. There's been uh, an increase in uh, digital skills uh, among staff and students. So taking advantage of, um, of that forced um, development uh, in digital skills, uh, perhaps um, uh, we, we, need, we really need to consider uh, how virtual exchange can, uh, can help um, in the, um, the learning processes. Um, mm. I think once we overcome the kind of, I think we're beginning to overcome the digital barrier which, which existed before, but I think teachers, uh, a lot of us are exhausted from this dual mode, from the incredible amount of pressure that's put on educators. Once we kind of overcome these, the present challenges, then perhaps as educators, we might be able to think about, you know, in, using technology to nationalize our courses um, in constructive ways to, to engage in collaborative teaching, to have students take part in um, you know, exchanges which you know, also, also the, the, the dialogue based models, which involve students from multiple countries, from huge networks, um, and, and they will be happy to use technology also for that purpose. I don't think we've been seeing enough of that um, use of technology at the moment. I think a lot of it has been kind of survival and exhaustion. <laughs> Definitely. I think Francesca once uh, has a question or a comment. Just a short comment uh, uh, to, to close, the, close or participate to this discussion, also based on our experience at the University of Siena, that is reinforces, uh, uh, reinforcing virtual exchanges in several uh, degree courses. Uh, it can help uh, uh, using virtual exchange, designing virtual exchange for our students and from students from abroad can also help in uh, changing, uh, let's say, so the approach of uh, syllabi and uh, our pro study programs, looking at the Bologna process, the Dublin descriptor, so we may focus more on learning outcomes than 
uh, on disciplines on contents and virtual exchange help us in uh, let's say making this kind of transformation thank you francesca yes of course and virtual exchange is also an opportunity to consider um, transdisciplinary projects and how different disciplines can also connect to each other uh, which is how the real world works because the world out there is not uh, divided into disciplines and people, students will have to work across disciplines in the real world. Uh, we also have perhaps a question or a comment from Zeynep. Hi, uh, I have a question, quick question. So uh, in one of your slides, uh, you mentioned that the countries are uh, having similar cultures and the exchanges between them. So uh, it, it doesn't point to differences, you said, as far as I understood. Uh, so I'm just curious about these similarities. Isn't it also valuable to see the similarities because, you know, they are different countries. Uh, yes, they are culturally similar, but uh, through virtual exchange, seeing the similarities, I think also something valuable. But what do you think about this? Just want, I'm curious about it. Thank no, you. No, I, I, I think both, yes, I did, perhaps I wasn't very clear on that. I think, I think students often move to countries which are near to them where they feel safe, um, perhaps. And I think, you know, similarity is fine. I think virtual exchange, I think for my students, the most powerful um, learning experience have, be, have come from virtual exchanges which connected them to young people in Palestine and Syria in countries where they wouldn't go for a mobility, where countries that they read about in the news but they don't actually have direct contact with um, and, and here I think you know yes it's, yes we're all human and, and, and talking about our similarities finding common ground to a degree is important but I think we also need to feel to understand difference, to engage difference, to, to look at difference on, on multiple levels and feel comfortable with it to a degree. So I, I, I think using virtual exchange for this kind of diverse experiences and getting to understand you know, parts of the world which are perhaps further away from us, which we don't interact with so often is so another of the you know, possible reasons why one might want to do virtual exchange. And one of the, the I suppose most significant impacts that I found students having through virtual exchange. Thank you. Yes, and this connects also to what Mariam uh, has just written in the chat about the fact that virtual exchange can foster connections with peers from uh, faraway countries uh, where you know they they wouldn't necessarily go to on a on a, a, a student mobility physical mobility. So uh, that's also important to bring in the dialogue also the voices of those students who come from countries that perhaps wouldn't be able to take part in physical mobility or where uh, our students would not go to on a physical mobility. Casper, uh, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, so no, just a, maybe a brief comment. I think it's an interesting question about, you know, looking at the differences or finding commonalities and I think what virtual exchange as francesca pointed out allows us to do is to connect young people uh from you know different places that they would otherwise not go to right so it's been pointed out physical mobility goes to nearby countries virtual exchange allows us to reach further to increase the diversity to intentionally also design the the interactions and meetings between the students in sort of your programming design and i think the way we at the Sharon Perspectives Foundation approach the design of our programs is not so much in, in finding common ground, it's more in appreciating diversity. And so the fact that we, that we are different and that there are differences and, and every individual and different cultures have different merits, we can applaud this, appreciate this, uh, and, and from that perspective actually collaborate instead of trying to find how we're similar, trying to appreciate how we're different and use that as a basis of moving forward, I think is a, is a more um, constructive approach. Thank you, Casper. Yes, that's an important comment. Of course, uh, we are looking uh, both at similarities and differences and uh, seeing only similarities or only differences is not constructive to dialogue. Um, you know, it's 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 the appreciation of both similarities and differences, and not just among countries, of course, because we we don't talk about uh, um, 
necessarily about uh, cultural differences within uh, geographical uh, nation states, uh, but also the appreciation of similarities and differences as individuals, because that's what's important. It's the dialogue individual to individual and the appreciation sure. of so what it's, individual it's, brings. Yeah. The it's, it's about gender it's about it disciplines it's about you can you can you can you can you know the diversity you can include on all kinds of um, um yeah, divides absolutely there's an um also an important comment from laura um that says that virtual exchange can also bring students together in the middle of nowhere uh, a mobile student often has to adjust to the dominant culture uh, but in virtual exchange, uh, those things are taken into account also. Absolutely agree, Laura. Um, if um, I think we, that there may be other questions and please continue the conversation also in the chat, but I'd now like to move uh, to Cristina Stefanelli. Cristina Stefanelli is our project coordinator, Frames project coordinator, uh, and she works for Unimed. Um, and she will be presenting the Frames project in a nutshell. Over to you, Christina. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Um, yes, I will. I will briefly present the uh, the Frames project. Um, as mentioned before, this event is uh, organized by by the Frame Pro Frames project, which is um, an Erasmus uh, Plus project funded by the European Union. So in this context where we um, have seen all the benefits and opportunities of virtual exchange and being aware that we're not uh, willing to substitute uh, physical mobility with virtual exchange, um, we have seen that still there are two challenges, how to design and implement blended mobility schemes, which are inclusive and intercultural within higher education and how to integrate blended mobility activities as a stable component of the academic offer. So for this reason, we have started uh, uh, the FRAMES project, which stands for Fostering Resilience Through Accredited Mobility for European Sustainable Higher Education Innovation. Um, and we aim to work on, on, on this topic of implement, implementation, accreditation, of blended mobility in higher education. As mentioned before, uh, the project is coordinated by Unimed um, and implemented by a wonderful team of partners from uh, Unicollaboration, uh, Sharing Perspective Foundation, the University of Girona, the University of Limerick, and uh, the University of Siena. Uh, the project started in February last year, and we mainly do four things. Um, a report on scenarios for the um, integration of virtual exchange in higher education, which is now available in uh, three languages, uh, English, Italian, and Spanish. Uh, we will deliver online trainings for educators and staff members um, to work with them on how to integrate virtual exchange into uh, their e courses and universities. Uh, we will produce a toolkit uh, so even if virtual exchange is not, is not an IT issue, still uh, educators, professors uh, need to have tools uh, for implementing their um, activities. So we will provide uh, a toolkit um, of tools, uh, um, softwares, but also uh, methods to implement virtual activities. And finally, a strategic framework, which will be led by uh, the University of Siena, on how to integrate virtual exchange at the strategic level of higher education institutions. Uh, we have run already a pilot training and the new one uh, is planned for May. Sarah will uh, go more into the details. Um, we will organize other events like this throughout the project and there are many ways for you to get involved. There is also a section on the project website uh, for you on um, how to get involved and which are the opportunities uh, for others in participating in, in what we are doing. Uh, I give the floor to you, Sarah, for uh, going into the detail uh, about the scenario report and what Thank is next. Thank you. 
thanks a lot. And um, I do apologize, but I have both kids on quarantine. So if you see people in the background, it's just my kids coming <laughs> here. So uh, very briefly, uh, can you all see the slides? Great. I will focus on um, the first two outputs uh, uh, we, are, we have been working and we will be working on uh, in the following months. Uh, the first one is precisely the report on the scenarios for the integration of a virtual exchange in higher education, uh, which, as uh, Christina was saying before, is already available online. And I wanted to give you, in a nutshell, a very brief overview of why and how it has been created. Um, the first aim was to show how virtual exchange has been integrated and accredited by higher education institutions through selected cases. And I think this is the added value of this report. It is aimed at higher education institution staff, be it teaching or uh, administrative staff, interested in implementing virtual exchange, in integrating virtual exchange at higher education level. And it is based on a pattern analysis methodology, meaning that um, we have both uh, carried out desk research and the primary sources have been the Evaluate report. Evaluate has been another project dealing with virtual exchange, plus um, um, a collection of case studies on virtual exchange and an open survey. We um, circulated this survey among various higher education institutions and asked any interested staff to present and illustrate their um, example of virtual exchange integration. Out of this analysis, we have been able to map 71 cases and out of them, 12 cases have been selected to identify the following four scenarios. First one, virtual exchange as a preparatory or follow-up activity to a physical mobility. Second, as an intertwined component of a physical mobility. As you see in the first two scenarios, virtual exchange is linked to physical mobility, and we can speak about blended mobility for the first two scenarios. In the third and fourth scenarios, instead, virtual exchange is, a stand is an activity as such, either a standalone learning activity or a component of a course. But in the third and fourth scenario, it is not linked necessarily to a physical mobility. Uh, in this table, you can see summarize the main features of each scenario. Uh, I invite you in any case to have a look at the report, uh, which is very user friendly also in the way it has been written. Um, very, very briefly, in the first scenario, the virtual exchange takes place, of course, either before the physical activity, this is the case when the focus is on the preparation to the exchange or after the mobility, the physical mobility. And in this case, it is aimed at reinforcing the experience abroad to it is aimed at making students reflect on the experience they have been carried out during their physical mobility. A further aim is create, to create bonds, bonds between the local and the international students and very frequently also between various cohorts of mobile students, depending on the nature of the physical exchange. Another aim is also, uh, especially in some cases, to reinforce internationalization at home. And this is the case where when the virtual exchange is offered to future prospective students, incoming students, and to all local students. Moving on to the second scenario, here the virtual exchange is intertwined with the physical mobility, meaning that it is part, always part of a specific initiative. It can be a summer school, it can be a specific project, um, it can be um, a challenge-based um, initiative. It may take place, not necessarily, but it may also take place while the students are abroad. In this case, it can be a while abroad module. Uh, I'm, I'm always referring to the virtual exchange. And the virtual exchange activities as such are in any case linked to the physical mobility. In the third scenario, we have instead um, the virtual exchange recognized as an individual activity offered within a degree as practicum, focused on more practical activities 
or offered as a compulsory elective course or a general course. So very frequently, uh, there are higher education institutions uh, setting up sort of an umbrella of courses like transversal competences, intercultural competences, general courses, whereby they um, um, include various activities. Among them, virtual exchange can be offered as a le standalone learning activity. And the main aim is to support internationalization at home and, and inclusion. In the fourth case, the virtual exchange is um, an integral and required part of the course, be it a traditional or online course. And the recognition is linked to other course requirements. This is a first important aspect. And the virtual exchange gives an international dimension of, to a course and is used to support the course learning objectives. As I was telling you before, we mapped 12, uh, we selected 12 cases um, and they feature within these scenarios. So um, here in this uh, table, you can see the list of examples that we have selected. And I will focus on one example per each, per scenario. In the case of the first scenario, so virtual exchange as a preparation or a follow-up to the physical mobility, I will focus on the ITEL prep, um, which is a virtual exchange carried out by the University of Limerick. For the second scenario, I will focus on Euroweek, delivered by the University of Girona. For the third, I will show you the example taken from primary teaching. Uh, so, and this is an exchange between uh, Germany and Latvia. And in the third case, in the fourth case, I will focus on another example from the University of Limerick, which is communication across cultures. But I promise I will be brief because I, I really want you to uh, devote and spend most of your time in the breakout rooms. So in a nutshell, in the ITEL preparation project, we see um, undergraduate students from uh, various disciplines. And more specifically, we have students studying English uh, in Spain and studying Spanish in Limerick. And they are set to go on their period abroad and to do so, they complete a series of telecollaborative tasks, working in pairs in small groups over eight weeks on various topics, uh, uh, mostly on um, expectations about living abroad, comparisons between the university life and academic systems. What are the major benefits of this exchange? And, and um, I do apologize. I know that there are colleagues from Limerick here, and I feel very sorry to summarize this about summarizing this this uh, virtual exchange in uh, such brief words. But if we focus on the most important advantages, I would for sure mention the psychological preparation, mainly reducing anxiety and increasing motivation of students. Second establishing long-lasting links between the two cultures. And third, the authentic linguistic uh, practice. And in addition to it, the intercultural uh, learning, which is developed through this virtual exchange. The main challenges can be summarized with the word asymmetry, because there, there is indeed an asymmetric exchange in terms of language proficiency, type of mobility academic calendars. So this is an aspect to be taken into account when working on a virtual exchange into this specific scenario. Moving on to the second example and to the second scenario. So where a virtual exchange is intertwined with the physical mobility, I would like to mention the example of the Euroweek initiative by the um, University of Girona, which is organized by the Prime Networking and a European network of 17 universities, which gather students, academics once a year for an annual one week academic conference. And during that week, students who have been paired into uh, groups from two to three uh, universities from this network to develop an online project in the three months before this annual conference, they meet there, they present their results there. And what is the major benefit from this virtual exchange? First of all, the inclusive and diverse student body. And the fact that uh, the project they work online 
they work on online is very multidisciplinary. And the high, the satisfaction rates are, of course, very, very high. And another advantage is the fact that this virtual exchange is accredited, even though, and this can also be considered as um, a challenge, the accreditation varies according to the specific uh, um, home university. A major challenge is for sure the, the different uh, level of investment by each institution involved in terms of resources and hours, and the fact that the international uh, dimension is someone lost, some, um, somehow lost in the recognition. I will move on to the third scenario, and here I'll quote an example from primary teaching. Uh, so this is taken from um, a course um, and um, a module uh, where uh, future prospective teachers are trained to become teachers, and they are offered an overview of primary education in an international comparison. So this 10 week long virtual exchange um, is composed of five learning modules during which students work on different assignments, but in these, in these um, international comparison dimension. So they are asked to reflect on similarities and differences within the education system. And precisely this specific feature of this exchange uh, leads me to uh, focus on, on the major opportunity, which is the fact that the curriculum as such is internationalized. So we speak about internationalizing the curriculum and also um, about internationalization at home. The main challenge is in this case, the accreditation and the recognition, which is different because it is linked to the home institution. Um, I forgot to mention that this virtual exchange is based on a pre-existing Erasmus Plus bilateral agreement. I will conclude well, uh, for the scenarios with the fourth example from uh, Limerick, communication across cultures. And in this case, we have seen as um, a module has been broadened to include this virtual exchange, which is an IUC um, offered by Sharing Perspectives Foundation, one of our partners present here. And in this case, we, we see that the pedagogical approach um, chosen is a blended learning model, where we have face-to-face -face lectures combined with this uh, interactive online, um, open online course. Uh, what is the major benefit? First, the virtual exchange is automatically accredited as it is part of a course. And second, there is um, an inclusive approach to internationalization. I would like to focus on the major challenges as well, because in this case, uh, if you are interested in setting up a virtual exchange as a component of a course, you should bear in mind that the workload of, of the course needs to be revised according to the virtual exchange. The, ver the activities that students are asked to do during the virtual exchange need to be taken into account. And in the same way, learning outcomes of the virtual exchange and of the course need to be aligned. And of course, a further challenge, but here I would like to say that this is a challenge for all virtual exchange, regardless the uh, scenarios they, are, they, um, they fit into, human and financial resources. Virtual exchange requires time, requires effort, and requires work. Uh, but I would like, if, if you are interested to know more about these scenarios, of course, you can have a look at the report. But um, this will also be part of the uh, training course we will deliver in May. We have already delivered an internal pilot between October and November. And now you are all invited, in case you are interested in knowing a bit more about that, to participate in the open version of the course. Um, and in this slide, which is my last slide, I promise, I will just uh, summarize the main features of the open online uh, training course on virtual exchange and blended mobility and integration. The first aspect is its aim. So the aim is to develop participants' capacity to design, implement, and assess, and assess and multiply relevant mobility schemes enriched by virtual exchange. It will be held in May, and it is addressed to internationalization staff. And by internationalization staff, I mean all the staff working in the field of internationalization, administrative staff, 
staff with uh, management roles, educational leaders, IT staff. Um, but as you may see, there are various offices which may be concerned. And um, these staff, these staff are from any interested higher education institution. There is no limit in participation, apart from the fact that it is offered to 100 participants. So uh, the first who register are allocated a place in this, in this training. Um, and you will be um, working on weekly asynchronous activities on Moodle, meaning reading, contributions uh, to fora, watching videos. Plus, you will be asked to participate in one synchronous meeting per week. Um, An estimation is about four hour workload per week. Um, the platforms where we will host this training are Moodle and Zoom. And to conclude, there will be four modules in these four weeks. An introduction to virtual exchange, then a focus on how to integrate virtual exchange at higher education level, virtual exchange integration strategies, and to, to conclude practical work to draft an action plan. If you are interested in registering, you can do so online, and you will receive in any case a link to register uh, after this, this uh, webinar. Um, I think I'm done, and in case there is any, any question, just feel free to ask. Yes, thank you, uh, Sara and Christina, before Sara, uh, for that presentation. We have perhaps a couple of minutes if anybody has any pressing questions on the project. How do we enroll in the training, asks Donna. Okay, there will be um, I mean, a central um, registration form, and it is based on a first come, uh, the first come, is the best served. So this is the, the, the requirement and the um, uh, principle we will follow. Um, the link will so be on the, on the website, yeah? It will be on the website and in any case, you will receive it after this webinar. So uh, it will be the first to be informed about the uh, course. Um, any other questions? To it. Okay, well, um, as it's uh, 12 o'clock, um, I would say that um, it's time for the breakout rooms. Now, I just wanted to share with you uh, the program again. Um, so as you can see, just a very quick word about the rooms. We have uh, five rooms, um, an Irish room, an Italian room, a Spanish room, and two international rooms. Um, the aim of the rooms is to be able to discuss uh, some of these topics and we've given you some questions that you would might like to discuss uh, in your breakout rooms. Uh, but the important thing to know is that the Italian room will be using Italian as the language of communication and the Spanish room will be using Spanish. Um, so of course you are free to join any room you want, but I would strongly encourage you uh, to uh, go to the Italian room if you are from an Italian institution, to a Spanish room if you're from a Spanish institution, and the Irish room that will be using English, of course, as a language of communication, uh, is particularly for institutions from Ireland. Uh, you will be able to discuss, to discuss the opportunities and challenges of uh, integrating virtual exchange in the context of your country. So that is, that is why there is an Irish room. The international room, of course, is for people who uh, don't belong to either of those three countries. Um, and we have two rooms. So we would like you to join room A, international A, if you were born between January, 1st of January and 30th of June, uh, and uh, room B, if you were born between the 1st of July and the 31st of December. Okay, so uh, it's just a way of dividing, trying to get an equal number, hopefully an equal number of people in the two international rooms. So 1st of, Ju of uh, January, uh, 30th of June, room A, 1st of July, 31st of De December, room B. Um, you will have about 40 minutes to discuss some of these issues that uh, 
that we have been presenting today. Um, and then we will bring you back for um, the, um, the end of the session, uh, reporting back to the main room. So um, I think the rooms are open, Christine, uh, ready, Christina? Yes. Oh, hello. Hello and welcome back from your breakout rooms. We hope you enjoyed uh, your conversations and uh, um, we have about uh, 20 minutes left. So I would ask perhaps somebody, a rapporteur from each of the, um, um, the, the breakout rooms uh, to summarize perhaps in one minute, one or two minutes maximum, some of the issues that were mentioned in their breakout rooms. So um, who would like to start? Maybe we can have the Irish can, room. Uh, yeah, okay. Casper, uh, you, you start with yours. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll try uh, one minute. Um, uh, feel free to add to what I'm saying, uh, fellow uh, international uh, uh, room uh, uh, participants. I think uh, the main conversation was about how to, how to accredit the real merits of virtual exchange and not having it along the lines of language learning where somebody actually is, is developing global competences. How can you actually get the recognition and accreditation of the skills that people develop through the virtual exchange also recognized and valued as such uh, was a conversation I think we've we've um, we spend a bit of time on that linked to how do we then um, uh, frame or 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 brand uh, virtual exchange in a way that it's appealing to um, to disciplines outside of the sort of typical virtual exchange disciplines, uh, the languages and the social sciences, maybe. Um, how does it work with health sciences, uh, STEM sciences, and how do we, um, yeah, how do we get that uh, uh, recognized? And then another. And the other element that we, we touch upon was the fact that um, not just not in physical exchanges, but also not in just a real classroom, there's, there's the actual interaction between the students that stimulates critical thinking and intercultural learning with the student body that you have. So the, the, the practice of virtual exchange, the horizontal interactions between students that, you know, stimulate their their, their critical thinking and global competences can also be done within the classroom often, uh, which is lacking. Uh, and and how do we how do we yeah how do we how do we try to bring the learning from the virtual exchanges into uh, into regular teaching uh, methods um, um, as well? I think within the time frame that I have, I hope I've, I've, I've touched upon the key points of our conversation, but otherwise, please feel free to wait. Thank you. Thank you, Casper. Um, perhaps we can have the other international room. So Anita, I would actually ask you to summarize briefly some of the things mentioned in the second international room. Yes, so uh, we had a lot of challenges we faced. So <laughs> I had to remind that like, like how good it is, especially when it comes also to inclusion and accessibility um, and that open classroom, how good that is. But um, we also, I think the big danger was that it's not a replacement for actual mobility. So the fear that it might be looked at as a complete replacement. And um, the big challenge obviously is the time for for um, teachers um, the funding so you might get funding to set it up but how do you make it a continuous project that is going to be funded um, also that some in some countries awareness there is no awareness around uh, virtual um, exchange that's why it doesn't even start and um, a very interesting um, uh, contribution was from Fayez, uh, who's from Jordan, who said that in Jordan, um, virtual learning is not accredited. So they even have to go to a higher level, to the political level, to make sure that um, virtual learning is accredited. So they're, they're um, or approved. So they have to face um, even a more challenging task there. If anybody wants to, um, Add something, please feel free. 
Thank you, Anita. That's, that's great. Uh, maybe we can uh, have the Irish room next and have a summary of that. Okay, so the Irish room was a small room, but very diverse because we had people with a uh, different experience of virtual exchange, people who've never um, implemented virtual exchange. So we had a, a, a very nice conversation, first of all, realizing that there is many ways to implement virtual exchange. So that was our first uh, point. And then based on uh, people's experience uh, was discussion about uh, how the, the institutions recognize the work of the practitioners and also the, the recognition of the of these changes when you, you implement it in your courses. And then, um, yeah, we talk about budgets also and sort of uh, the, the, the ground practices of, of the practitioners and all the opportunities. So I would say the third question about uh, what are the opportunities and challenges, we kind of focus on the opportunities and so all the, all the positives. And then we had some, somebody from um, EIL Ireland which uh, they do uh, is changes uh, based on the development of the global competence. So we had also the other the other side, not just um, language uh, exchanges, which was most of the members of the room. So so it was really enriching for everybody, I would say. Thank you, Marta. That's great. Um, I would um, now move to the Spanish room because there was another small room, Alicia. Um, maybe you can just uh, report back on that before we give the microphone to the Italian room, which was the biggest of all. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, I have to say it was a privilege to be in this small room because we had a student perspective, which is extremely valuable for us. We had a dean, we had a responsible of the international office of one of our faculties, and uh, the uh, responsible also a leader of internationalization at home activities. So we had very diverse profiles, which was uh, a very good learning process. We discussed uh, the importance of having a virtual exchange as part of the institutional strategy for it to, to actually be implemented and to be of value. Uh, I would like to mention the student perspective in this case from Angela. She said that um, when once it was an institute part of the institutional strategy, the students valued the experience more than when it was a just one teacher doing a uh, thing in their class. So I, I found that comment very, very interesting as well. Um, we also discussed about how uh, virtual exchange can empower students to participate in mobility. So for institutions where we have small numbers of outgoing uh, students, how important it is to provide them with different options so that they can taste what international mobility might look like and feel like and then empower them. And then if they want to go later on or during their studies, that's, that's um, but we've given them the competences and the, and the confidence to do so. And as to the challenges, the main big huge one is recognition, recognition both for students and for the academics. So the time for academics that they have to put into creating a good and valuable uh, virtual exchange activity. And for the students participating in this new methodology that maybe is added on to their, to their coursework. In this, I would also like to mention the student's pers perspective where she said that um, the importance of having a good design of virtual exchange so that the workload is a good experience and not becomes just too much crammed content and not uh, an experience as such where they can integrate all the learning outcomes that have been designed for this activity. And I hope I did one minute or a bit more. Thank you. That's that's great. Thank you, Alicia. Um, OK, so finally, the, um, um, the, the, the biggest room of all, which was the Italian room. Um, can we just have your summary from there? I guess, yes, to... I guess it's my turn. So yes. uh, we, we have been uh, discussing quite a lot on all the issues of the three topics. Uh, I made a summary in seven points. The first one is uh, 
the need and the opportunity to have the recognition of the virtual exchange at a strategic level. So if you do so, then it can be easy for professors and degree courses to plan and uh, to design a virtual exchange and to propose them to the students. The second issue was how to motivate teachers, professors, because they are not always uh, willing, but not even um, aware of the value of this experience for the students. The third th uh, thing is, uh, was already mentioned, is the recognition of the credits. So uh, there must be someone who designed the learning activity within the virtual exchange, but also have a knowledge of a uh, right balance between uh, the, the work uh, students are asked for, but also the number of credits uh, that can be recognized. And that requires, this is the, first, the fourth point, a strong cooperation with the administration and, uh, and uh, uh, didactic office, because they are the ones that formally and bureaucratically speaking uh, are in charge of the learning agreements and uh, all the procedural things. Uh, this also is valued uh, if it is uh, made within the frame of the interna internationalization of the degree course, because uh, it's one of the key points for in Italy, uh, for instance, uh, for the um, uh, accreditation and evaluation of the degree courses by our Ministry of uh, University. Another point was the fi financing. So, so far, uh, the virtual exchanges were designed in our experience, in our group, uh, without any additional fund. So uh, it's teachers, professors that are activating uh, cooperation with other professors and uh, no additional fund in providing these additional opportunities for these students. Uh, then we were wondering uh, who is go who can be the right audience uh, for the training of next year in May. So they can be tutors, they can be professors, they can be uh, PhD students, they can be the ones that are uh, involved in the designing of the learning activities within the virtual exchange that are all planned for the coming year. Another issue, and this is the one of the, the last point, is how to use virtual exchange to attract foreign students. The, a colleague from uh, Chieti uh, raised the issue because it's, uh, I mean, he found it difficult to use it to attract uh, students from abroad, while it seems that virtual exchange so far is quite good to uh, motivate and attract Italian students to be involved in. Um, and the last point is uh, to have, um, let's say, a key uh, point for having a virtual exchange a reality within our university is a key uh, cooperation among different uh, uh, academic profiles. So the, the uh, president, the head of the degree courses, professors, uh, but also all the administrative staff that, that must be on board from the very beginning of the process. Thank you, Francesca. Some interesting points there from all the, the rooms, uh, the importance of uh, involving many different figures within our universities. So uh, making sure that the process is a top down, but also a bottom up approach to in the integration of virtual exchange. Uh, interesting to hear from the student uh, that um, uh, somehow the students are more motivated when it's virtual exchange is integrated <clears throat> within the strategy. And I would say perhaps when virtual exchange is integrated also within the learning objectives of uh, the course that they are doing. If the students see uh, what the purpose, understand the purpose of taking part in a virtual exchange. And this brings me back to uh, another comment. I think it was from Casper of how to, um, how to make sure that we don't lose, of course, the content of uh, any course is important. That is why students are doing a course. That is why uh, professors are interested in the course. But there is a whole aspect that has to do with soft skills, with um, intercultural learning, uh, with, with uh, digital literacy, which is so important right now. So many other uh, transversal skills that are also important, but those also need to be integrated in the learning objectives of the course. If they are just seen as, uh, you know, a, 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 a bonus, a plus thing to have, but, you know, the important thing is the content, um, then the, the students themselves may feel less motivated to take part. So in the integration of all those objectives uh, that are clearly stated in the learning objectives of 
of any module of those. That's uh, that's very important. We still have a couple of minutes. I don't know whether anybody wants to add anything to what has already been said. Um, if there are no further comments, I would perhaps pass the microphone on to Christina for uh, the final uh, words about what, uh, what can be done. In the meantime, I just want to thank all of you for being with us for two hours and for sharing all your thoughts and ideas. Um, and uh, I encourage you to keep in touch with, um, uh, with, the, with the project. Christina, over to you for just a cute, quick word. Uh, thank you, Anna, thank you. you. Wonderful moderation, so smooth and relaxed. Thank you so much. Uh, and what a wonderful morning. Thank you, thank you everybody. Um, we will keep in contact. We will send you an email with uh, the recording and the follow-up questionnaire and the links to the upcoming training if you would want to join or distribute it within your universities and networks. Um, I would like to thank all the participants and all the wonderful partners in the Frames project. Thank you, Francesca, for your keynote. Thank you, Anna, Alicia, Anita, Marta, Sara. We are a really great team. Casper, uh, Juliet. Thank you, Anna, Francesca, and uh, Luca. Really great working with you. And um, thank you, and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for having us Thank and giving this opportunity to Bye. collaborate with each other and to discuss the issues. Thank you so much. Thank you.